Hi, this is Kerry R. Tech with Wicked Stocks, bringing you your daily Tesla report for Friday, February 23rd, 2024. But before I walk you through the charts, as usual, just want to encourage you to please click like if you haven't already. Subscribe to the Wicked Stocks YouTube channel. Share the content, if you would, with friends and colleagues, and check out WickedStocks.com, where we offer a full suite of both daily and weekly analytical videos just like this one. Daily analysis in the SPY and the Triple Q, that is the S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 ETFs. Weekly analysis in the S&P 500 index, the NASDAQ 100 index, the Long Bond ETF, the TLT, as well as two individual stock picks a week that you never see on YouTube, that is eight a month, that cater to the three to five week swing trader out to the three to five month near term investor. We're always looking for at least 20% moves on those stock picks. And you can check out all of this for no cost for five days. We offer a five day free trial up front with a wickedstocks.com subscription. So sign up for wickedstocks.com. Check it all out. If you don't like what you see within five days, you can cancel your subscription at no cost to you whatsoever. Let's take a look at the chart. Start with the weekly bar chart. Just a reminder that this is the big picture. This chart goes back several years, but really what I'm pointing out here is from the July high, we have this channel top that is more than six months now in the making, so more like seven months. Um, and um, <clears throat> we tested it a little over two months ago. Uh, the top of it, I should say, the 253 and a quarter channel top. Uh, it was an objective prior to that. And once we tested it, we'd mentioned how uh, that you should consider the low 170s or this channel st structure at 170.31 to be in reach over the next, over the following rather, two to three, three to five months. We didn't have a clear cut sell signal, but we were testing a meaningful ceiling of resistance. And we did fall uh, to the 170 point. 3-1 channel bottom three weeks ago. Uh, we tested it on the daily chart and came very close on this weekly chart. We also tested the 5 8 Fibonacci uh, downside, which is based on the January low against the, um, uh, the the more recent July high. And so there you have it. We've tested long-term support. And following that testing of long-term support several weeks ago, we mentioned now how the 253.25 channel top should be considered in reach over the next several months, three to five at the most. It is not a clear-cut buy signal just yet. That would materialize with a settlement today above 208.59, which is not likely to happen. But this is a newly formed descending one-third speed line that is formed in part from the recent low in early February uh, from about three weeks ago. Uh, and so 208.51, trend-defining resistance, I'll call it midterm, able to contain buying on a weekly basis, quite possibly through March. And from here, we could fall back into the low 170s within three to five weeks. In fact, I think that is the trade to do uh, if you're a three to five week swing trader. This is the next trouble spot to the upside. Now, we just might close above it uh, shortly after testing it. We may not get the uh, the bearish rotation. And if we do close above 208.59, then we are, in fact, then anticipating uh, the 253.25 descending channel top within probably another three to five weeks. That would be realistic, I think. Following a settlement about 208.59, you got the 250s up in here dropping daily, three to five week objective above 208.59. But once again, if you, you know, you maybe you bought 250 strike out of the money calls that don't expire for at least six months or so. And we've been mentioning that, that when we tested the uh, low 170s channel top, it was more in the mid 170s then that you could actually play that as a long term trade, reaching for 245, 255 strike out of the money calls that don't expire for at least six months. And if over the next week or so we were to close above 208.59, you could still make that play, reach for those same strikes that don't expire for at least, I would go about three months out on that expiration. But until then, I see this as a possible scenario through March, topping out at 208.59 and then falling back once again to channel support at 170.49 over the following three to five weeks. And that is kind of the big picture play. Let's take a look at, um, we do have this rising channel bottom, 194.21, that is intraday support can contain intraday weakness. Uh, in terms of, though, our solid support, 
that we think is buyable uh, through next week. That's 188.60. We could test this today if we break 194.21. 188.60, a rising two-thirds speed line that can absorb selling through next week and above which I consider 208.59 to be a one to two week target. So if you're a one to two week swing trader and we happen to test 188.60 today, that is your cue to go long in anticipation of 208.59. That may mean re reaching for, I don't know, 205 or 210 strike out of the money calls that don't expire for at least, I would go a month out. I consider this a two week rally or less. I'd go a month out just to reduce the theta time decay element from the equation. If we were today to close below 188.60, just the opposite, a one to two week sell signal down to 170.49. And that would be a retest of this meaningful channel bottom that could then once again contain selling on a monthly, possibly quarterly basis. Uh, and uh, we could trade inside of this structure for months to come. Uh, if at the end of a week, and it's not gonna happen today, today, Friday being the end of the week. But if, say, by the end of next week, we were to close below the 170.31 channel bottom, it would need to be by a 1% margin. This week's number is 168.60. That will drop next week. That if settled at or below at the end of a week on a Friday afternoon, would then set off a two to three month sell signal into the upper 90s. We're obviously not going to see that today, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. I'm going to go back to this chart uh, to the upside. We do have the 194.21 channel bottom I just mentioned as intraday support. Very tradable support. We tested it on, uh, let's see, a Friday of last week. It's a Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we slipped below it a bit, came off of it. I'm sorry, I've got these days wrong. This is actually Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So Tuesday, we tested it. Wednesday, we didn't. Thursday, we slipped below it, came off of it, closed higher on the day. 194.21 can contain intraday weakness. Solid day trade level, by the way. Buying 194.21, you can hold out for 201.67, which is a short-term three-day channel top. And if we, um, I'm just going to say close above 201.67, you should on Monday see that 208.59 speed line uh, where we could actually top out once again uh, through next week and even through March trade and from here fall away perhaps to 170.49. Now, I'm not saying that I expect us to fall away from 208.59. You never know exactly what to expect. The market tips its hand one way or the other. And testing 208.59, you're selling that strength. Uh, you could also wait for a sell signal to the downside to sell in a more reliable sense uh, on weakness following a testing of this resistance. Uh, but um, the market would clearly tip its hand to the upside if we were to close above 208.59 in the coming days. And if so, if you set yourself up for the short side, if you reach for 170 strike out of the money puts, let's say when you're testing it, uh, and then we close above it. You should reverse, liquidate those out of the money puts, and then in turn reach for 245 or 250 strike once again out of the money calls that don't expire for at least several months. That remains the play to the upside, and it becomes pretty clear cut uh, above 208.59. Until then, this is your sellable resistance, your profit taking resistance if you went long several weeks ago in the low 170s, uh, and is also your short selling resistance in anticipation perhaps of falling back to 170.49. You could also sell 208.59 in anticipation of the upper 180s uh, rising speed line. Uh, but let's talk that downside one more time. If we break 194.21 today, 188.60 likely, where we could bottom out through next week and once tested, this is the one to two week swing trade back to 2859. If we close below 18860, no good reason to be long Tesla if your time horizon is one to two weeks, because over that time frame, I would expect the market to fall back into the low 170s again, where we could bottom out. Uh, on a monthly, possibly quarterly basis. You know, I think that that pretty much rounds it out. Please click like, share, subscribe. Check out wickedstocks.com. We offer a five-day free trial. We put out a stock pick this week, an abbreviated week on Disney. We have stock updates that we'll be putting out on Friday. Next week will be two stock picks every single full week. Uh, so check it out for free. Five-day free trial at wickedstocks.com. I'll be back Sunday afternoon with Monday's Tesla, and you have a great weekend.